Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast Special Sundance Edition, episode number 130. So much time is wasted trying to be better than other people. Elijah Wood. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your freezing and humble host, Alex Ferrari, coming to you live from the Sundance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, a very snowy and cold Park City, Utah. Today's show is sponsored by Indie Film Hustle's Filmmaker Process. We provide filmmakers with professional services to get their films or series funded, finished, and distributed. Some of the services we offer are pitch deck creation, film budgets and schedules, domestic and international sales estimates, legal contract templates, consulting, post-production services, script coverage, professional trailer editing, poster design, film deliverables, and production payroll. To learn more, go to www.filmmakerprocess.com. Today's show is sponsored by Distriber. If you guys are trying to get your movies or feature films or even shorts onto Netflix, Hulu, Google Play, iTunes, Fandango, or any of the major streaming services, Distriber finally lets you in without having to go through a traditional distributor. And you keep 100% of all the revenues and your rights. So if you want more information, head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash sell my film. That's IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash sell my film. The show is also sponsored by Hollywood Camera Work. If you guys are interested in learning how to direct actors and become an actor's director, Hollywood Camera Work has developed an amazing master course called Directing Actors. And it is almost 30 hours, and I've taken this course, and it is by far the most comprehensive directing actors course I have ever seen. So if you want to get access to this course, head over to HollywoodCameraWork.com and use the coupon code Hustle to get 30% off. That's HollywoodCameraWork.com and use the coupon code Hustle. Now we are in a very special episode, guys. This is the first time ever that I have been broadcasting from the Sundance Film Festival. I've been here for a few days now and been recording amazing interviews for you guys and going to be coming out with a bunch of videos, uh, interviews, as well as on the street uh, kind of stuff inside the, the Sundance Film Festival. And it has been amazing. I can't even tell you. We've been partying really hard, meeting a lot of filmmakers, talking to a lot of filmmakers. You could hear my voice is a little hoarse because of all the um, partying we had. We had a huge party last night here at where I'm staying uh, on Main Street. And uh, it was insane. I've got a, uh, some video that might might make it onto YouTube. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to think about it. i got to talk to the people who are in the video to see if they'll let me put it up. But uh, it's been amazing. I can't, I can't see amazing so much because it's just been so great. And having access to all of these cool and really remarkable filmmakers. And I'm asking them the questions that I want to hear. And I want you guys to get the knowledge from. So in that spirit... The first um, first of this entire week, I'm going to do my best to do one a week up until Friday and then a bunch more next week because I've got a ton of content coming to you guys. So we're going to be doing almost a, we're going to be doing almost a daily podcast every week coming right, straight out of Sundance. And I also wanted to give a big shout out to all the indie film hustle tribe that came out to see me speak at the Slam Dance Black Magic um, kind of talk that I did about. This is Meg and my workflow using DaVinci, DaVinci Resolve uh, for editing color and how I shot with the Blackmagic cameras. It was a, such a fun uh, talk and I love connecting with you guys. So if you guys are out there, thank you so, so much for coming out. I really, really appreciate it. Now, these episodes are going to be partnered with my good friend Sebastian Tordas from Circus Road Films and also a co-production with Circus Media. These guys have been amazing, and it's so much fun having Sebastian on the show as my uh, co-interviewer, and we had a ball doing a bunch of these interviews for you. But today's show is super special. I wanted to launch with a bang, and I'm super thrilled to be launching our Sundance series with our special guest, Elijah Wood, and his incredible partners over at Spectre Vision, who are Daniel Noah, Josh Waller, 
And the balancing force in this insane Four Musketeers, Lisa Whalen. And I got to tell you, this is probably my favorite interview I've ever done. It was so much fun. We not only got deep, really deep into a lot of the stuff um, that filmmakers go through, what they've gone through, the emotions of being partners, as well as amazing knowledge bombs about how to make it in the business, how to create a brand, um, how to focus, how to just do what you love to do. And these guys are such an inspiration uh, with what they're doing. And I'm so, so proud to bring you guys this interview. Now, it is going to be not like your normal format that you hear on Indie Film Hustle. So the mics are going to be tossed around. There was a little bit of drinking going on. (laughs) So um, bear with us, but it is super awesome. And I really like it. I hope you guys really like it. And it will be on YouTube probably next week sometime once uh, I get back into uh, Los Angeles. I'll be working on getting these up on YouTube as well so you can see the craziness as it happens, but you get to hear it here first. So without any further ado, here's Elijah Wood, Josh Waller, Daniel Noah, and Lisa Whalen from SpectreVision. Hi, I'm Alex Ferrari. And I'm Sebastian Tordaz. Uh, thanks for joining us. We are here with SpectreVision and Company X. Yes. 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 All right, so I want to introduce everybody real quick, and then we'll just get right into, into it. it. Uh, Daniel Noah, Elijah Wood. <laughs> Josh Waller and Lisa Whalen. Thank you. Got it right. All right. Well, um, do you want to go with the? I, mean, I think the first question really is um, one that you've probably heard before, but we'd like to just get it. And how then, did this happen? Yeah. How did this? How did this happen? <laughs> how did this happen? The it's four a, of you. It's a long story. He's the best at doing it. Let's hear it. So let's go. <laughs> let, let's you let him go. Off the mic. Yeah. Oh, you tell oh, it. Oh. <laughs> well, what is? Tell them everybody what Spectrovision is and. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, uh, so the uh, the three of us uh, who, who started Spectrovision, um, we met in. Well, Waller and I have been friends for. I have lost decades. track. Several decades, yeah. yeah. Um, and we met Elijah on a film that uh, never got made that, that was in development uh, that I had written and Waller was directing and Elijah was, was attached to star in. And even though that movie never happened, we the three of us became close friends and kind of bonded around a shared love of genre films. And at that time in 2010, the kinds of movies that we really loved were, were – the kinds of genre movies that we really loved were not generally being made in our country and in our language. So films like Let the Right One – in and the orphanage and um so we we founded the company uh to kind of create a hub for filmmakers who are interested in that kind of filmmaking but also i think the other thing was kind of that the company was born out of a frustration that the three of us had felt that it was often very hard to find producers that we felt were uh material driven and and as passionate as we were as talent, uh, they were generally very transactional. And uh, so we kind of, uh, it was, had a very like, like Goonies kind of quality to it of like (laughs) sitting in his apartment and deciding to try this thing and and kind of like writing up an oath and and making a pledge to each other. Well, what was the oath and the pledge? It was um, that we would always be motivated. We would always uh, react to material from the heart and not look at it transactionally. Can we transact off this? That the first response was a heart response. And if we had a passionate response to a piece of material, we would commit to it and then figure out later how to bend the economic reality around that movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the economic reality. That's a nice, <laughs> yeah. that's a nice term. Yeah. <laughs> and what is the difference with company X? What, what, what is that? So, you want to take that one? Lisa, Lisa, Lisa should take yeah, that sure. one. Uh, the difference basically is that with Company X, uh, it can be anything. SpectreVision, you know, these guys spent a lot of time crafting, you know, a beautiful company with a beautiful mission. and mm-hmm. um, But it's really specific what a SpectreVision film is. And we can't always classify it exactly, but <laughs> it's really specific. It's unique. It's compelling. And um, we wanted to be able to do things kind of outside of the genre space. Yeah, something that we you don't know. Have to compromise. I mean, I think the thing with with SpectreVision over time is we would come across so many films where we would fall in love with something, but we're like, ah, it doesn't quite fit within the confines of this thing that we're trying to create. And with mm-hmm. Company X, it gives us this freedom to do anything. 
you know, th- there would be some things that were like, ah, somebody else is doing this, or it's a little too broad, it's not weird enough, or whatever the fuck it is that we're yeah. trying to do with Spectre Vision that we can't always articulate. There would, be, there would be these things that we'd have missed opportunities with that we would, like, love and want to be a part of. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now, back to the show. And with Company X, it gives us that opportunity to actually invest in things that are sort of outside the bounds of what we're trying to do with SpectraVision. So well, I think a perfect example is like, what if someone had approached us? A- <laughs> He's got too much. No, no, I'll, I'll, no, 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 I'll take no, them no, both. No, no. I need them both. I'll take it. There we go. It's for you. He's guys. talking. This is right. Right. No, Josh yeah. doesn't talk usually. Yeah, so he's very excited. Yes, they know me so well. <laughs> now, like, what if someone had approached us with like something like When Harry Met Sally? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that film. Of course. I adore that film. Amazing. Is that film a SpectraVision film? No. Absolutely not. <laughs> no. It does not fit within the brand that we created. Well, if he met her and killed her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, <laughs> is where my mind goes immediately when I watch that Wait film. Always. Second. I just copyrighted yeah. that. <laughs> you heard it here first. When Harry killed Sally. <laughs> when Harry killed Sally. Yeah, we should just end the interview because that's the only thing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, the, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the only that's thing point. that's going to be quoted from this entire <laughs> interview. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Harry killed Sally. Yeah. But like, if we want to do a movie like that, we can't do it with Inspector Vision. But that doesn't mean that I don't adore the script, adore the filmmakers, adore the actors involved, and don't want to see that film get made. So what are you going to do? Like, defer it to some other producers that you don't trust more than more than your own partners? Or it's like water down. Let's the do this. Tried to cr- craft for a long time as well. Yeah, why you can't know? we bring the same principles that we've brought to all of the films within SpectraVision to films of all genres? What are your principles? <laughs> I, I, because I, 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 well, actually, with the films, <laughs> with, the, with the films you oh, make. Yeah, yeah, what is <laughs> within SpectraVision? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, what are those for us? Brand for brand like it's our main, very simple. We're always trying to do things that other people aren't trying to do. Um, so if it's if if it feels like within the genre space it's being well covered, those aren't the kind of movies that we want to make. We're looking for, I don't know. We're looking for things that heart that response. things that won't it's get a heart, j- it's a heart response, but it's it's a, it's something that we feel isn't being expressed. How did they get to you? Uh, a good example, actually, is is the Greasy Strangler. That is a movie that probably wouldn't have been made mm-hmm. if it hadn't been for us and the other maniacs involved to sort of rally support behind Jim Hosking to get that movie made. That's a really good example, I think. Like-minded friends. So, you're ba- so like, basically, the films you were trying to make are things that would might not have a chance anywhere else. In, well, we in some cases, in some yeah, cases, like yeah. there's just no chance yeah. that this movie. Well, and, will and, get our, and our, our somebody, first, but there's some there's yeah. quality there. A girl walks home alone at night is my favorite example because it's so clean. Is that like that was our first film, and mm-hmm. and when we told people, hey, we're you know, we got our first movie going. Um, it's got a really long name. It's called The Girl Walks Home Alone at Night. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's in black and white. It's in Farsi. It's a horror movie that has nothing scary in it uh, <laughs> and uh, it has no stars. And everyone was like, what are you doing? That's not, <laughs> and, that's not studio uh, all the way. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't understand what you mean. I mean, did Warners didn't pitch that. <laughs> it's just, that fully exemplified what we were. Perfect. Like we, that, that, sorry. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, for I us, that exemplified who we fish. were. If, if, if there was ever anything that was like an easy way to define ourselves at that time, all we would have to say was that film mm-hmm. and the reason we got behind that film. It felt like, okay, this is kind of the, it, 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 it almost like, it fit within the context of our mission statement. Now, I read somewhere that you, saw, you guys said that profit is not always money. It's other things as well. There's other kinds of profit. Can you explain that? Wow. Well, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know which one of us said that. For me, like it, asked, it gets actually it dovetails into the question that was just asked, which is like what we're looking for. And to me, it's like it, it truly comes down to the heart responses between the three of us and now the four of us with Company X, where it's like we just have to connect with something. And I think because the three of us and now the four of us. Are, are such different people. 
We are very Perfect. different That's person- exactly what we want to yeah. get to, actually. We are very different personalities. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm the asshole. Like, <laughs> well, wait. No, no, it's wait, true. You're and, a marine. And I'm okay with that. You yeah. were a marine. That's true. I still am a marine. Okay, so wait. I want to no, hear about joking. this. I'm just joking. I yeah. didn't want to pull that. I want to hear about As a marine, I have to pull that. Why did you, why did no. you join? Why did you do it? Why, why did I join the marine? Yeah. Wow, I was not expecting that question. <laughs> um, well, I want to. This is a big. It's a. It's an important. You, it's for an eight important years. part of your life. Yeah, for what, eight years. <laughs> yeah. James Lipton. It's a very deep question. Um, uh, a, I, I, I felt that at seventeen, I needed a bit of direction. I knew I wanted to be involved with film and the arts, but I didn't know how to go about doing that. I also knew I didn't want to be stuck in like hometown kind of syndrome where you stay there, you get someone pregnant, you end up working some job that is just strictly manual labor for the rest of your life. I just didn't want to get caught in that. So I was like, oh, I'll do something easier. I'll, <laughs> I, I'll join the Marines. And I'm also fifth generation Marine. Oh, are you? Oh, and wow. my great grandfather founded the Marine Corps Association. What? And really? there would actually be no, yeah, whatever. Anyways. Yeah. So there was a bit of a, a pull there to go into a but, but Yeah. There was a bit of a calling that my, even my dad said when I came, came home one day in high school and was like, you know what I did today? And he goes, no, what'd you do? I said, I signed up, I signed up for the Marines. I joined the Marines. Wow. And he was like, what? Because I basically had this hair in sure, 17. Sure. And he was, and I was a, I like danced and was a musical theater. And it was like, oh. And my dad said, I'm great. He was like, well, don't do it because it's some stupid tradition. If you're gonna do this, cool. he, yeah, that was That's a, super cool. That was the only cool thing. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 no. It was. It, he just said, "Do it for yourself." Yeah. And like, what that I I heard that, and like, what I can say is that like, I've been able to take my experience in the Marine Corps and bring it to our mission as That's filmmakers. Oh, there's, no there's there's a certain amount of like, I went through something where it's like. <laughs> it's one of those situations where if I can do this, I can do anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Making movies, <laughs> don't make me fucking laugh. Right. Like, it's like you just set your sights on the goal and you don't stop. It's just that simple. And that's what like I was able to take from that and like kind of bring into our mission. Well, and he and Walter, who runs production for us and runs our sets, it, it, you you do it with the mindset of. The military, and but but uh, I would add with also bad, by the way, because, tremendous like, warmth and, get, and and kindness as I, well. <laughs> but I would say ninety five percent of it is warmth and kindness. The five percent is like the part that like I will get caught up in, which is just like the eye on the prize. Mm-hmm. It's my own like. Ball. So you got? Are you always on set then? Always. Great. I, I try to be. There's there. We've always talked about like if we want to be successful as a company. As in war, <laughs> I think that's relevant. That there has to come a time where you're like, I'm not going to be able to person to be the person that's in every place at every time. It's going to come down to us hiring people that we really believe in and that we really trust. And then we say we believe in you and we trust you so much that we're going to let you go out and do our thing because we're like minded. And that and that is filmmaking. Excellent. Is surrounding yourself with the people that make you make you look amazing. And looking why? Because they're smarter. Than and you. looking out for each other to make sure that you know mistakes don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching it. I've been like, up. I've been like, I've been just uh, sitting here as he talks. Just I, go, I, I oh give God, it three more going, minutes. It's going. It's going. It's going. It's going. I want to read the screen, the screenplay page that you write about this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> like you know. Daniel slowly watched as well. Cut cut to a close up, cut, 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 as it gets closer and closer. (laughs) Daniel, we got to get your story too. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What are you going to No, I was, I was going to ask you. Um, there's a lot of young filmmakers who are watching uh, this and listening to this. Mm-hmm. I want you guys to talk a little bit about, because you know, I know you guys talk about, talk about the material being important. Mm-hmm. Can you also talk about the importance of the filmmaker, the importance of being able to, and this is something a lot of fil- young filmmakers don't understand, is that you have to be able to s- get along with someone 
for a long because this is a journey making a movie sure. and so to be, be flexible. Yeah. So tell 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 the filmmakers. Yeah. Do you guys get along? For. Yeah. yeah <laughs> obviously, there's yeah there's there's a good but yeah. Can you talk about like what you're looking for? Uh, what your advice would be? It all starts with a vision. Ultimately, mm-hmm. I mean, okay. for us as producers. We're looking for material. We're looking for films that we want to invest our time in. And sometimes that's four years, five years. Right. Um, Good time. So we're looking for filmmakers that have a unique vision that we you know, couldn't find it any other way. But, yeah, to your point, it's also about the notion of being flexible and, uh, I don't know. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And then, it, 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 I, I, you know, sometimes with some so I've worked with a lot of filmmakers, they get the, these these tunnel visions. And then when you work with experienced filmmakers like yourselves, you know you gotta bend, you gotta move, you gotta kind of juxt because it, that's the way the business is. But to a certain degree, that I think that's where we come in. You right, know? you're there to guide. We we meet filmmakers that have a specific vision, and we can help them in that mm-hmm. process in regards to getting it made. Got it. You know, and we, it, you know, it it's, was never by design, but we've ended up working with a lot of first time filmmakers, and mm-hmm. and we kind of noticed it one day, <laughs> and, <laughs> like, and we're like, and I was puzzled by it, and I realized, you know, we're looking for unique visions, and I, I talk all the time because I run development, so my job is bringing these projects, in, and they sometimes come from other places, but, um, <clears throat> uh, you, you know, I always, I always talk about this concept of outsider art. Is that a term you guys That's are familiar with? That's actually a great with? term. Yeah, um, which is to say, you know, an artist with no formal training. And sometimes that lack of training can produce something really, really powerful. Um, if you even just Google outsider art, like in terms of visual arts, you'll, oh you'll God, see incredible, you know, like someone who looks, their drawings look like a child's drawing, you know, but, but it's the kind of thing that uh, someone might train 25 years to achieve, but this person, because of the way they were born and the way their brain is wired, they just happen to nail it right out of the gate, you know? Um, and we've had, I mean, I think Lucas Amon, who's a, a young filmmaker that we're making a film, an incredible visionary film with this year called Popsicle, um, is a great example of that. And, and um, mm-hmm. he had cold contacted us on Facebook and that was back when we had the bandwidth to read those that kind of stuff. Um, and I remember I, re- I saw his thing, and I thought this this pitch sounds really interesting. So I I, re- I reached out to him, and we read read his script, and it was magnificent. And uh, we called him, and it's been I don't know maybe four years, uh, uh, and a lot of that time it was spent um, training him really uh, uh, to to be ready to handle because uh, it's a big film. Um, and, and so it speaks exactly to what you're saying is, right. is um, it, it's, it, I think, I think a lot of people in our position would have immediately passed him over. Right. Because it takes work. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lack of, you know, he doesn't have the, the professional experience, but for us, we're going, that doesn't matter to us. The vision is, is what matters. Right, yeah. yeah. We you're can help him get ready for the professional demands. That's easy in many ways. Um, but I think what Lisa said is really vital, which is that, that I think what, what, what all directors need to understand is that it is one part uh, uh, certainty about vision and another part flexibility. And, and um, sometimes what you want to do is just simply not achievable for whatever reason. <laughs> and you have to be ready to uh, change it up on a dime. So if you are in touch with the sort of emotional intention as a director, mm-hmm. and uh, there are a hundred ways of achieving that emotion. It's not just the one that you have in your head. You have to be ready to drop it on a dime. I mean, that, and that's what happens that's, on set that's, all, every that's day. That's the test. Okay. And that's when you know... If you're oh, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> no, but like that is the test. I agree. That is the test. Is when like when it really gets going tough. Yep. When you're forced to go, okay, how do I figure all the things that I think that we are most I myself as a director, but also we as producers. I th- I feel like the things that we're the most proud of are the things where where. It didn't go the way we wanted. Yeah. It was the times when, like, it was like, you're not going to get that money that you really wished you had for this scene. I always feel like you're going to, you're going to have to, yes, you're going to have to, you're going to have to rely on your team and like get real, get, Mm. get truthful Mm. and go, okay, guys, (sighs) 
I shot list. I shot listed this whole thing. <laughs> it was at another location that we can't get. What are we gonna do? Mm-hmm. And and you just trust each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those are always the scenes that end up being like the most magical, mm-hmm. the most relevant, and the most just truthful. And I, I found that one of the most difficult. Um, personality traits of a young filmmaker is rigidity, surprisingly, mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. is a real terror about mm-hmm. someone's messing with my vision. Yeah. You're yeah. dead. You're done. done. You're dead done. if that's how you're approaching it. Like you, like, but, but the yeah. industry doesn't set you up to not oh. be rigid because I, you have to ser- – well, it's going but, into it, you don't know where to, where to find the producers that you truly are going to... There's also a, yeah. an amendment to that, you know? Yeah. We worked with Lily Amapur, Anna Lily Amapur on, on Girl Walks Home Alone at Night, and she had yes. a rigid Absolutely. perspective. Absolutely. That was unquestionably her own, and it became very clear as producers when we met her. We don't have a lot to say here. Yeah, like, same with Jim Hosking. We realized really quickly, just get out of the way. This is her like, film. <laughs> yeah. and it was very clear, clearly her film and same with Jim. And so to counter that, like sometimes right. there are filmmakers that Absolutely. you encounter that have a, a sense of what they want. And to a certain degree, you have to buy into that or you're ultimately going to yeah. but that's through with their vision. That's why it works yeah. for yeah, but the four of us. It instinctual at that but, point. However... Which and that that's a benefit for those filmmakers. Totally. But also, and we know this, both of those filmmakers heard every single one of our notes. Yeah, they 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 heard them. They took them into consideration, and whether they took those notes or not is irrelevant. Totally. But they heard them. But I think that's why it, it makes sense. I can't. I can't. You guys, you know, this every time I talk, I just. <laughs> We've never done an interview like this. I love it. I love it. This is amazing. Is that all okay? We're good. We can just get started. I'm gonna, when I talk. I'm going to write the ship here. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank I think you. that's why it makes sense why we work with a lot of first time filmmakers is because they're such a good, the three of them are so good at creatively uh, being the support system they need. Mm-hmm. And the kind of reality of getting a first time filmmaker's movie made is kind of where I come in and go, oh, this insane idea that you have, I'm going to translate it to this, and this is what financiers want to hear. Right. So the combination of them having full support creatively <laughs> and, and majoring like voodoo magic. Uh, why, why was that the prop for tricking? <laughs> it well, it's, you rolled a one. It's Look at that. It's funny that you should Whoa. ask. I actually planted that prop. We have a drinking. <laughs> we have a drinking game here. Um, Wait, do you this, really? this isn't enough for you. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Drinking there's game? a drinking game. So there's a later tonight at a party. This is my favorite school. school. <laughs> this is yeah. this is, I, I teach at USC <laughs> Cinema. I think this is our favorite interview we've Jesus. ever done. Oh, I'm so glad. So this glad. is genuine. So there's twenty. There's there's, there's a number for every bottle. You roll it three times. We mix those drinks. You name it, and then you shoot it. And actually, Tim League came up with the idea. No of way. Tim Lee came up with bottles. the idea. We haven't numbered the bottles uh, yet. Tim Lee created this game. What, what is it called? Do we have? Uh, shot roulette. Shot roulette. <laughs> I this. So after this, the is, end, this is the game. Everywhere. So this is sort of he our favorite prop that we like to keep around. <laughs> right, but we haven't numbered We haven't set things. it up yet. We haven't so set later it up. on. It's, it's Tim <laughs> 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 I invited you to the party. Oh, you got to do 10 shots right now. <laughs> or we could do 10 shots. Or you could do 10 shots. It's okay. He wasn't mic Yes. <laughs> Well, it's it's. All yes. right, so I, I, I I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it at this point. Oh, man. I see that sh- that Lisa is a balancing force. She's, yes, we like to in, call. It, she's our Wendy. I, yeah, I mean, yeah. she seems like a balancing she's force to you guys. I could see the energy just on the couch. I personally <laughs> feel that I am not as strong of a human. Huh? Without my partners. Oh, that's great. Right. Oh, Wait, no, oh no. my no, God. But, uh, <laughs> I know that sounds super sappy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, to me, is the core. I'm not going to get emotional on my own <laughs> words. But, like, this, this, is, this means a lot to me, this stuff. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> shut up, you fucker. You <laughs> Like a pig. <laughs> Just get it out now Just because out you, now you're going on stage later. James Lipton, where you get emotional. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. James Sorry. Lipton. What's what your favorite you color? Say? <laughs> if, if you were a tree, I can't. I don't know James Lipton. Okay. 
<laughs> anyway, no, I, I was going to say that like each of the filmmakers that we've worked with have become our close friends. And like we started the company and like, yes, we wanted to start it to, you know, watch films that we wanted to see. But we also wanted to form it as, you know, respectively as like a director, producer, an actor and a writer, director as like to try to be the producers that we truly wish that we had. And I don't know that even I'm speaking as a director that like I've had that yet, you know. And, like, to date, like, all of the filmmakers we've worked with are our friends. And when you surround yourself with your friends, you just want to support them and make them be the best version of themselves. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now, back to the show. And that doesn't necessarily always coincide with what they think mm-hmm. they <laughs> want. Well, you're watching you know? out for them. You're watching and, out for and them. And that, that yeah. comes down to trust. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, we were, we've been talking about this a lot over the course of this past week, you know, just with this film, because Mariana Palka, mm-hmm. the writer, director, and like lead actress of Bitch, you know, she's been a friend of ours for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And we believe in her. And like before we made this film, it was like, we want to show, we want to show the world Mariana 2.0. I said that to her. And, and she's like, capable and, of beyond what people and, know. And it her. said, like, we're going to challenge you, like, in a good way, as friends challenge you, as family should challenge you, as people that love you should challenge you and are willing to say, like, I love you. I love your passion in this moment this moment you are wrong <laughs> and, 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 the, and and yeah, as a, and that's okay to say uh-huh. because it's coming from a place of love sure and that that little like that dance starts to happen and that's when like things i don't know he makes it like sound art happens he makes it sound really easy though like they're just friends with all of these super talented people and so that <laughs> these movies get made but it's so easy to become friends with you guys oh. that it's like they're becoming friends with the filmmakers. They're filmmakers first, usually, often. And, Especially me. You know, I'm really like... Yeah, know. he's like the best. You're, you're awesome, sir. Yeah. Oh, you're awesome, sir. I got to put that Cut out. Cut him <laughs> off. Uh, I, I didn't want to miss out on, on Daniel's story, too, though, because you, you, you actually started as a writer. I mean, you went to NYU Tisch. I did. And then so what was your story from there? Well, I I started at, well, I thought I wanted to be an actor initially, ah, and I th- okay. as I think a lot of filmmakers do, as so did Waller, because it's the closest you can get to making films or, you know, telling stories is, is just pretending. Um, I, I was, I started studying acting and, and I, within weeks, uh, I mean, meaning like in college, I realized that all of my intro, my scene partner uh-huh. yeah. and making sure that it was a good scene. <laughs> and I actually had no desire to be in the scene. Mm. So I, wow, that's so fashionable. yeah, <laughs> so I know. And, but, wow. but I have this profound passion and interest in, in the, the craft How and art of acting. Yeah, you were very unusual in that way. Yeah. Yes. That's why yeah. we're here to announce that Elijah Wood will no longer longer be active. <laughs> you heard it here first. You heard it here first. <laughs> the globe, mother, that's, that's right. <laughs> We're leading with that. That's actually We're the leading with that. That, that, <laughs> just, oh that, just, that just usurped when Harry killed Sally. <laughs> <laughs> that just over, yeah, it killed when, when Harry killed nice. Sally. <laughs> no, but he, he brings up something really specific. Keep it up. Oh, wait, Mike's. Mike, Mike. Of working with a fellow actor in an acting class and being more interested in the scene and facilitating the scene than performing himself that's how i feel as an actor i'm far more interested in in facilitating the ultimate vision of the director or the thing that we're creating than being you know the star or the whatever. yeah or standing out as the character i just want to be a part of making this thing work but, I, I mean? but, I, but I've that's heard, how he is as a business and that, partner and that ultimately too. extends to why i want to be a producer I love filmmaking. It all just comes back to this ultimate core of the baseline is we're all here trying to create something that we're really proud of at the end of the day. And I I love, and I've been fortunate to have a career as an actor. What that has facilitated is ultimately the experience of working with a lot of people in a creative environment 
we're all working together to create something that they really believe in. That has been the thing that I'm addicted to. And so as an actor, I'm, all, I'm always just looking for that. I'm looking for, you know, ultimately, sure, a role that I want to play that's interesting, mm-hmm. that's challenging to me. I love doing that. But more importantly, I just want to be a part of a thing that that guy's trying to do with another group of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I felt, dude, I feel or like, a gal. Yeah. I feel like yeah. you're such uh, an asshole. An <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. What if I just was like, it just went in a completely different direction right now. <laughs> Let's talk about, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, but I'd like just to pay a little homage to my partner and my friend, is that like, I feel like you're such an intellectual and you get your intellectual side out with the producing side, and but you're also uh, uh, you have like such a strong physicality, and you get that through. You get that kind of like that box checked with acting. Sure, you're like I need to like this catharsis, this yeah. actual physical catharsis. I need it to happen through my acting for me to be sane as just a human being. You know. Sure. But, I find, but isn't it like some of the best actors are exactly what you they, they They want the other partner in the scene to be better. You know, like the Hurry Up Tom I find, I find there with, are two. Uh, there yeah, are two. Yeah. There's, there's two kinds. I think there are two kinds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there I, are think, two kinds I think there are there, there, are, there, 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 are, there are the, there are the filmic, <laughs> there, there, there are the actors who get, who burrow <laughs> deeply into the, the, the very, the, the, like deeply, deeply inside that character. And that's where they live. And then there are actors like you who are more a total filmmaker. It's a term I like to use a lot. Sure. Where, where you're, you're doing that work, but you're doing it more in service, service of, of, of a greater uh, design. You're more aware of the greater design. Mm-hmm. You're not just myopically focused on your character. Mm-hmm. Um, and both ways work. You know, I mean, there's great, you know, there are great, great film actors of, of both of both types. But that's so interesting um, to hear about your process in trying to be an actor. Right. Is ultimately you realized. Oh, yeah. Shit. I'm also terrible. That's another. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's inaccurate. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's very, very but, but that's irrelevant. In that process of discovery, you ultimately yes. realized I'm more interested in facilitating Yep. These group of people to make the the scene or whatever it yep. was that you were working on good, yep. and that led to your yep. your role as a writer sure. and a filmmaker. Well, and I think now you know, like you know, for me, like I'm a, I, 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 I'm able to write. I, I can direct a movie. I can produce a movie. I, I, that sounded so obnoxious. I, I do three no, things, those, but those but are the three things you okay, do. Okay, yes, he has done all but, those things. Yeah. I know, I'm actually it's interested in your transition because you were a writer. You did yeah. WGA, did all that. Yeah. What was working, and then what was what wasn't working, or what changed that you decided to to There's go with the work? Happens dance in there. In fairness, which part? The producing part. Never something that you wanted to. Do. Oh no, I had no inclination that I would be a producer. None whatsoever. Well, I was. I. I Came out. I made a. I wrote and directed a little, like a no budget film in, a, a long, long time ago. That I re- it is so awesome. <laughs> What's it called? It's called Twelve. It's you can't see it. It's not available. Um, <laughs> well, we I, we, I, we I could change know. that. We <laughs> could change it. <laughs> we know people. My that email, email is, is Waller at. People. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it, and it was also very positively reviewed on Indie Cool News. Oh, really? Nice. Very good. Nice. Very good. It was by Robert Tarkill. <laughs> very cool. The writer of Doctor <laughs> Strange, two thousand. Yeah. The year two thousand. Anyway, so I um, so I made this film and and then and uh, and then kind of like Hollywood <laughs> came calling and and uh, and I found myself working as a writer, like a studio writer, and um, yeah, which so is I, great. I was you know writing writing studio movies and selling TV pilots, and I did that for years, and nothing got made except one thing. Yes, um, that's the problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, you know, I had this terrible crisis in, 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 after doing it for for a few years, in which I had had the uh, kind of a, a bucket list project, which is one of my favorite authors is Graham Greene, and I love the uh, the cinema of Graham Greene, and I had always wanted to adapt a Graham Greene novel. So I convinced Universal to to pay me to write an adaptation of a Graham Greene book, and I was I, I couldn't believe it. Um, by the end of the process, it had been so perverted from from the source material, and I don't mean that like you have to throw away the book when you adapt it. That's healthy. This was something else. This was changes that were so clumsy, and and I always like to use the the, the analogy of when you're a kid and you've got your popcorn and your dad wants some, and he puts his giant hand in, and just like <laughs> gets all over the cat. Like that was how it felt working with the studio. I was like Jesus, be like be a little careful about what you're doing when you reach yeah. into the bowl, you know. 
Um, it was so it was so distorted from uh, and and changes that just seemed arbitrary and and I was so disappointed. And then I got the call from my agent, like great news. <laughs> They're they're going to continue developing the project, and I said, "What does that mean?" Said, they're 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 going to keep it in active development. What what are you telling me? And the, what, what I realized was, oh, I'm being told that I'm being fired and replaced by a bigger writer, right. and that is considered a success. Right. So yeah. Um, and considered a success <laughs> because it could get made and right. he'll make some money and blah blah blah. But, but, it, won't, really but success, it won't be the so movie that yeah. it won't I, yes. be the movie that I that yes. I was excited about. Right. It won't be something I'm proud of. The only thing it will do is my make me money be. and right. give me another right. ding, like another notch on my belt. So fucked up. And and so I, I realized I don't want this. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. This is not what I want with my life. And, and it was really hard to let it go because there were, you know, I knew there were so many people who dreamed of being a Hollywood screenwriter and, and mm -hmm. um, that I felt like I had no business turning that away. But mm -hmm. I did. Um, and I, and I kind of went out in the wilderness and, and I told all my reps, that I said, I'm, I'm going to focus on independent film for two reasons. I want to be able to take matters into my own hands and not be at the mercy of someone else. And two, I've realized that I want to tell stories about people, intimate stories about people. I'm not, I'm not interested in all this you know, gunplay and it, it's not, it doesn't get my juices flowing. So they all dropped me. Like there was not even a moment of like wow, wow. pretending to be supportive. <laughs> like it was really like, and, uh, and I had to kind of like com Hollywood. completely <laughs> start over. And, um, so, uh, you know, eventually then, you know, I met these guys and, and, um, you know, now here we are. And, and, now, and now, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I couldn't be happier. I, you know, this is, I got what I wanted. We're making small movies with people I care about and movies I'm proud of. And, and you may make some other films too, actually. You're going yeah, to kind of have your cake and eat it too a little small. bit. No. They could be. <laughs> well, 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 let me be clear about what I mean by small. You I mean, I mean intimate. intimate. I mean yes. intimate. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We will, we're incapable of running a non intimate set. <laughs> <laughs> Friends with everybody. We can kind of, we can kind of yeah. tell based on this interview. Yes. <laughs> you, you know what I would like more, more, more from you guys. There's one thing because you know I the Spectre Fest. Uh, are you going to do more Spectre Fest? Because I think that's very interesting. Can you tell? Yeah. Can you tell everybody about what Spectre Fest is? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Spectre Fest. <laughs> uh oh, was this uh -oh. the wrong thing? No, 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 no. Spe it's loaded. No, it's oh, it's loaded. loaded. Oh no. Okay. No, no, no. It's that's okay. Um, Spectre Fest. Uh, so we have a really nice relationship with Cine Family in um, in Los oh, Angeles, which which, which is uh, uh, like I mean widely considered the best repertory cinema in the country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Outside yeah. Of New well, very different. Very different. No, I know. No, very, very, very different. Very, very different. Very different. There's room for both. Um, so, uh, uh, they're dead to me. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry wait a minute. It, it, it started with uh, Hadrian Belove, who's the, the, the artistic director, approaching Elijah and me because and, uh, we both knew him and saying, hey, would you guys want to like do a weekend f of horror stuff? And, yeah, and we were like, yeah, that sounds great. And we started like feeding him these ideas. And he was like, you have a lot of ideas. Like, do you want to do something more than a weekend? And, and it exploded into this thing that lasted for a month and it was really successful. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it, you know, cu curation is a huge uh, part of the way we approach producing. We talk yes. about that all the time that we, you know, and that's one of the reasons that we're so fussy about what we will and won't take on for Spectre Vision is that we talk about it as a record label yeah. that when you like a band, you go, what other bands are on this label? I've heard this, this label has earned my trust. Right. And, uh, and while they're also different, but they all, there's certain things that are in common and, and you start, you become a fan of that label. There's almost no film entities that are like that. There are a few. Uh, A24. A24. Yeah, I was about to say A24, Draft A24, House, yeah. you know, um, Miramax back in the day. Annapurna. Annapurna. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, but, but so that we approach Spectre Vision that way and, and also like not repeating ourselves and, mm -hmm. and, and, um, so, uh, so the curation was something that was really already very much in our, in our, in the way that we operated. And, um, and we just found that we really loved it and it seemed to work. And, 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 um, it's also great because we get really early looks at new filmmakers and we get to 
meet them really, really early in like, you know, things that haven't been released yet. We, we see them and we, when we screen their movies months in advance. And I mean, I'm blanking on an example, but I feel like we have movies that have come out of that festival. Um, so, uh, yeah, so we do it, we do it every October. And, and, um, the reason everyone laughs because the, the Spectre Fest is in a state of transition. Spectre that Spectre Presents came out of that festival. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Spectre yeah. Fest is festival. the curation, the, the fact that, People seem to be interested in, in what what you guys are curating, what we're curating, um, isn't something that has to live in October. Mm-hmm. You know, like it. So we're kind of just figuring out what is the next world for Spectrefest. Yeah. So I wish amazing. we had. You know, we, yeah. if this was a while from now, we'd be like, we have a great thing to tell you about yeah, Spectrefest. Yeah. But, but we, it's great, and, I, and I love it. I, you know, I love. I'm a ham, and I I love talking. To, you know, doing interviews and stuff. And and you know, we've had incredible. You know, we've. Like, oh, I wouldn't know. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't see that. I, don't, I mean, I, don't. I mean, sitting in your seat. Um, uh, you know, we've had like Elias. Marriage came. We, you know, he's a friend, and we convinced. You know, this guy never does anything, and we, you know, we convinced him to come out and do an evening with us. And, um, like we brought Larry Fessenden out, who's a. I'm a huge. You know, he was a huge impact on me as a young filmmaker, and did like a two hour conversation and just really amazing. And, and, you know, I think also like we're always learning too, you know, from, from the, from these. these well, speaking of shadow of the vampire, I, I've always wanted something to happen on set. It, when, when German expressionist cinema, they all wore lab coats. I thought that was the coolest <laughs> thing. That's like Dr. Lab wow. Coats. You should bring yeah. that back. Yeah. You should probably That's like the that. coolest thing ever. Lab Coats on set. Everybody was... It, it feels a little was awesome. vaguely ominous. Like, <laughs> what are you going to do for to visit, me? Yeah. For visitors on the set, they're like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> One thing I find fascinating about um, SpectreVision in general is that you guys are very clear about your brand. Can you talk about the importance of when you create a company or an entity, how important it is? Because you literally have to go out to the company. You have to kind of look... Dude, that was the, it was, it was, the, really it was the most important thing. When we, okay. when we started our company, we literally met at his house. We sat around and we were like, what are the movies we want to make? And we made like a, kind of like a bucket list of the films that we wanted to make with varying genres within the context of horror. The, the notion of identity was everything to us when we started. Mm-hmm. That's Every, all we had. That was all we had. And that was all that we were focused on. The choices that we would make, the filmmakers that we wanted to make films with, and ultimately the scripts that we found, all related back to this notion of who are we? What are we trying to do? Who are we? Because it couldn't be like, if, if everyone directed it towards like, who is Elijah Wood as an actor, oh, that's a different case. Well, there's no question. That it, it had to be that. like, it was the concept, who, who are we course. as like a group? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like trying to figure that out. And what is SpectreVision? And ultimately, trying to craft a space that became familiar to people based on that identity of, oh, that's who they are. That's what they do. We can go there for that thing. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was trying to establish something that was like based on a, a certain number of films and a certain sense of taste and focus. This is a place to make this kind of film, to attract these kind of filmmakers and these kind of distributors. And that then would, you know, in theory, <laughs> establish us as a home for this kind of thing that would then allow for a, for a certain amount of growth and ease of getting these kind of things made that ultimately were a little harder to make initially. You know what I mean? Thanks, perfect. And we I- also were unanimous. We chose initially that we were unanimous or we were nothing at all. In terms of selecting. Products. In terms of like, like yeah. what the three of us, because we felt like going into like again like how different the three of us were when we got it started Mm -hmm. it was like (laughs) the three of us could not be any more different but for some reason the universe has connected the three of us and we've become close friends guys it's working seriously because it is is. is. is not thank you it is thank you and they're succeeding i mean but see that but but, but see like that's that's but dude like but but like like, we just relied on our friendship and then if we're like it's it's kind of like oh god this is fucking dumb sounding it's totally three musketeers type shit (laughs) it's like all for one one for all we we were kind of like if the three of us agree on something, then it must be working because the three of us are very different people 
and we're very close friends. Mm. But I think too, like that that magic in a bottle of that is um, like when when I was deciding if I was going to come take the work job. With these maniacs. You work with jo- these join maniacs. with the three musketeers, right? Yeah, yeah. Be the fourth <laughs> musketeer. Um, it is actually like the four musketeers. <laughs> it is. It, you know, it's actually, that's right. You do need a poster. Don't forget oh, D'Artagnan. You guys really do need a poster. I, I call that an D'Artagnan. intersection. D'Artagnan. Yeah. That's exactly. That's a great. D'Artagnan. Yeah. Oh, the Jesus. Okay. <laughs> when I was deciding if I was going to move cross country to work with these lunatics, um, I asked around to everybody. I was like, so... You Who know, the what, fuck are these guys? <laughs> and unanimously, people were like, oh, yeah, Spectrum Vision is great. The brand is really strong. And I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, but what about their business? Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm moving across the country. Like, what's the deal with their business? And they were like... I'm going to have a job. I, I, you know, uh, and they were like, I, 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 don't, I don't know anything about business and that, but, but they're great. Like, I love all their movies. I was like... Okay, okay. So they had put something out into the world that people couldn't even communicate, but they knew they liked it. But that's a crazy thing was, for us, too. Yeah. Like, we, that was our goal. That was the thing that we had set out to do. Set up, an, you know, establish an identity, establish a sense of a brand, and a, a sense of who we are. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now back to the show. And also like a space for which there's a comfortability for artists to come in and express themselves, right? And be supported. That was it. And the fact that within two years of having had conversations at his house, the three of us with our ultimate goals in mind, the kind of movies that we wanted to make, that there was a sense in the industry of who we were mm-hmm. was insane to us. Yeah. And it's awesome. Uh, it still it's is. Still is. No, no. <laughs> right, right. I actually Dude, had people say, like, four years I don't know if they're bringing films they're to, yeah. to Sundance. Uh-huh. And that's still a crazy notion. Right. Because all, all we ever did was just lead with what we believe and heart and trust in material and, and trust in our vision. And somehow that has managed to come back to us very quickly and been received by people in the, the artistic community. and. It's, it's well, I mean, way beyond our That's why we had to make Company X. Because you, you can see it's not that Spectre Vision is a brand that you can just throw any movie into. Right. That it's like, we want to yeah. do this. You don't want to dilute They kept it. coming to me and saying, right. like, we want to make this movie. That it doesn't make sense concern. for Spectre Vision. It was like, well, what do we... That's, that's what we do. So there had to be something else where we mm-hmm. could participate in these films that we were so passionate about, but that just... Didn't fit in that. Well, and, and bitch is a great example box. of that. Although that's I, company you know, X, right? Is yeah, bitch is company yeah. X, and, and company it's, it's X funny though. that I mean, it is. People are saying that it has horror elements, which I think kind of surprises us. But um, but that was a good example of something that I don't. You know, it didn't really meet the kind of genre requirements of Spectre Vision, and thank God we had another avenue for it because yeah. I, I, that movie is so vital. Um, uh, company X gives us an opportunity to do that, and in, in a way that doesn't confuse the clarity of, of the Spectre Vision thing, which is it is about Spectre Vision is about genre. It's yeah. about is about the unknown and, and mm-hmm. as another unique, phrase that like right? something very unique and, and I like a term I like is museum grade pop art. Which nice. I think is a very nice and clear yeah. kind of and yeah. the exploration of the uncanny. Of, of the uncanny. Which yeah. is, you know, yeah. it's relatively specific. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm pretty I'm very grateful that there is an entity like you guys out there because Dude. there's so, I mean seriously we're grateful too I mean no seriously because there's so many like all the movies you released what are the chances of they actually getting made elsewhere you know like and you put that art out there and and you're wondering like how come it's gone back to us so fast is because it's coming from the heart and you can see it and you can hear it in yeah, your voices you love you love but you but you the love for what you guys do is just it's just just spewing off you guys. So of course it's going to come back to you so quickly. It's yeah. it's really remarkable what you guys are doing. Thank you. I wish there was like another twenty of you guys companies. Well, the, we don't. Oh, companies? No, 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 no. <laughs> just, no, 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 no. Just ask. Well, but, but <laughs> you know what? There, money but, towards those twenty companies. <laughs> go towards yes, yeah. You get well, residuals. You get residuals, of course. Yeah, but there are. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, yeah. between a twenty four and yeah. and Annapurna Draft House, mm-hmm. um, you know, K period with their the stuff they're producing. Mm-hmm. There's really interesting people that, and entities that are out there making great films. Snowfort. Snowfort, yeah, totally. 
Um, we're in a fucking exciting Travis. time, you, just gave you guys. A shout out like, to Travis it's Stevens. It's no not. Fun. It's Love not it. dire yeah, for film. Travis we're enough. we're in a really interesting time where there's so many different methods for which a movie can be financed and distributed that it it it's equal playing ground and there's great taste and and you know festivals like Sundance mm-hmm. allow for some of these movies to get a platform the greasy strangler was released at Sundance last year that's insane <laughs> that movie's so fucked up <laughs> and it and it found and it found an audience oh, right. um we're also seeing uh we're seeing equal opportunity within the context of, of, a, of a sort of meld of genres. Prior to like four years ago, films like that would have only been in the midnight section. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing those kinds of films genre bleeding into other sections of, of, of the festivals. The witch, and, that, the shadow. Right, right. and that's very exciting. Uh, I don't know. I think we're in a really exciting time for filmmaking and we're really psyched to be in the midst of it and, you know, meeting all these people no, and not honesty. contributing. I feel like there's a really, there's a really strong community that's growing right now mm-hmm. in like the, the, the filmmaker community. Like okay. It's just really the, the web is growing and it's, it's a web of, it's a web of honesty <laughs> yes. Well, the, the trick is I though. I heard what I was about to say. It's not a web of lies. It's, it's not, definitely not a web of lies. Not a web of, a web of truths. A novel. Oh god. The trick though is still getting more people to to see it. Well, that's the problem. I, I think I think that to take it a little bit out of the heart and, and into the business side of it is that. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to hear anything. There's so many platforms right now that need content. So we're in a really good spot because we can create Mm -hmm. TV or film or streaming or just everything is just watchable narrative. Um, And so we're in a great spot and all those voices are getting to be heard. And maybe they're not getting to be heard in a normal theatrical platform, but I mean, People are seeing them and okay. and they're loving them. And I was in a movie that, that is premiering on Netflix. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's awesome. By no, the way, can, can you it's guys talk a little? Can you guys talk a little bit about the business side as far as distribution? Because I know that's a big mystery for a lot of people, and especially how it's changing daily, pretty much now. Like every other day, there's some new way of getting it out. What are the? What's your like model for distributing like a movie like Bitch? Like, how is that going to go through the pipeline? Honestly. I don't know. I just went through this experience making this film with Macon Blair for Netflix. Mm-hmm. If if you can get your film financed mm-hmm. and made with full creative control, mm-hmm. it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> right. I, and I mean that. Gotcha. Like, we all hold on to that sort of, you know, ideal of something being released theatrically, that we can all have the dream of something coming out and, and having a relatively nice thea- theatrical run. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Those days are kind of over. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. What's more important to me, I think, and should be to other filmmakers, is what's a scenario in which you can, your film can be financed and you have the ultimate creative control? That's the important thing, not the distribution model. Mm-hmm. Do you have the freedom to make the movie that you want to make with the relative budget that gives you that freedom to make it, get the, make it the, way, get the, way, the way that you conceived? That's way more important to me than the, the run of the film. Mm-hmm. As it turns out with something like Macon's film, we got that made through Netflix. So that's going to be seen by 94 million people, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. On a platform. Right. That's fucking insane. Bigger than a theatrical. And he, right. Totally. Yeah. And he got full creative freedom to do that. So that's the most important thing mm-hmm. to me. And I think, you know, the, the, it, it, in the years since we started, we've had this arc of understanding about totally. letting go of the old model. And, and you know, like when, when I was coming up, the term straight to video meant you had oh, failed. It yeah, you oh, no, failed. it's done. You're done. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but now I'm even, I've even gotten to a point where I, I, when I hear about theatrical run, I'm like, Ooh, like, uh, why, would you, like <laughs> why would you do that? Yeah, like that could lose a lot of money. I don't know. Like, oh, you know, um, and, and I think that for filmmakers, the spiritual reward of, of of the theatrical experience is this: it's festivals. Yeah. It, you, that's yeah. where the filmmakers yeah. get that 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 feedback. That um, and but where but where most average consumers see these films is in their living room, and that's just a reality. Well, it's just a reality. I, I have kids. Look, it's iPad. It's actually more intimate now. People, you bring it to you in your bed. 
or whatever. And it's yeah. it's far more intimate. Like when I grew up, the TV's like way over there. My, my bed's here, TV's over there. But now it's like you're watching it like this. It's actually much more intimate. Mm -hmm. I, I don't watch it like that. I watch it on a 55. <laughs> That's because we're yeah. older. Because you like, live in an ivory, you, you live in an ivory tire, sir. But kids, kids watch it like this. I know. This. Yeah. I don't want to. That's, That's a new generation. Yeah. La, 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 la. That's the thing. Like everybody, I, I've been in a lot of meetings coming, coming from a corporate space where people, everybody wants to figure it out. And I was previously in TV. So that, mm -hmm. that model is even more messy right now up, yes. than film. <laughs> And with film, we have a million opportunities. With TV, they need to try to figure out the opportunities to go to. Um, and when and you say TV streaming as well as you, including streaming and Exactly, that. everything. Okay. And, you know, everybody in the room is going, well, this is how my kids watch TV. So this is going to, this is the future. And it's like, the truth of it is, nobody knows. Yeah. Nobody knows how your kids are going to watch TV in 10 years. Nobody knows how it's going to be different when they have their kids. You know, so it's, it's being flexible. And you know how it's hard to be flexible if you're a giant corporation. Mm -hmm. But what we yeah. are is a very pivotable, yeah. lean, right. you know. You can change on a dime. We're, 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 we're all very lean. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, we're able Kyle to, Kyle, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of us is Kelly, so. Um, <laughs> but um, it's, it's nice to be able to, with each movie, just go, uh, we don't know how this is going to get distributed, but we have these five options, and then we're going to pursue what's best and find the best partner for the film and its content. What makes sense? Um, but nobody knows. We should, I, I think that we should, we should kind of wrap it up, I think, actually. Um, thank you. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. And now, back to the show. Guys, thank you, guys. Really this was awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Can I ask you guys one more question? Yes, do you want to do one more? Go on. One more yeah, question. Yeah, sure. um, one for Elijah and then one for everybody. Uh, as <laughs> One question in 20 parts? Uh, one question. <laughs> just another hour and a half I could, please. No. Um, Elijah, as, a, as an actor who's obviously done a lot of films, yeah. what okay. do you look for in a director? Because I know a lot of directors yeah, are listening to this. And, they, they, you know, working with an actor of your caliber, what yeah. do you look for? In an, or what helps you? Or what helps you and what, what do you look for when you're working with a director? Um, it's someone with a distinct voice. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I feel like half the time I'm responding to material mm -hmm. and the other half or in tandem, I'm responding to a director. There's no difference. No, I know. Well, <laughs> I mean, sometimes there is. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. well, sometimes there is. But I mean, I, I'm looking for someone who has a unique voice. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, making just to sort of cite a recent example, I don't feel at home in this world anymore came together because well, a, a lot of reasons, but I, I had fall, fallen in love with Megan's work as an actor initially. Mm -hmm. um, Blue Ruin's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I met him at Fantastic Fest in Austin and was like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was like, can I send you a script? And for me, that was an incredible honor. This was someone I, I admired and, mm -hmm. uh, He'd written something, so I read it and fell in love with it. Um, so that was about this person having written something, both someone I'd already had a, 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 a sort of relationship with in regards to his ability, but also something that he, read, he wrote that I was in love with. Mm. Um, I don't know, man. It, it, it ultimately comes down to a specificity of a vision, be it in the material itself or within the context of the director. Okay. But I'm always looking for something that I emotionally respond to. And it's not different from what we're looking for as filmmakers. Okay. From the standpoint of what we're doing with SpectreVision, we're looking to get ourselves behind something that is unique and different and something we've never read before or we've never seen before. Uh, filmmakers or material, material that we're wanting to sort of get our, you know, get behind. And that's the same for me as an actor. Very cool. Great answer. Uh, and then the last question is, and I always ask this of all my uh, interviewees, three of your favorite films of all time? <laughs> Any of them at this moment? Yeah. Okay. Well, my favorite film is Vertigo. Excellent. Uh, Three. Um, I think I would go so with pick one each. McCabe and Mrs. One. Miller. Just one, one each. Okay, I'll go with Vertigo. I always say Harvey. Oh, that's a great. That's a, that makes that's awesome. Yeah, that's a great movie. Heat. 
Yes. Yes. I got my, um, I'm going to go nostalgic because I was just talking about this earlier. I know this is silly. Clue. Oh, wow. I love Clue. Clue. Which, which ending? Which ending? Uh, the Tim oh. Curry ending. Oh, okay, okay. Come okay. on. <laughs> oh, wait, we, we have to hear yours, though. So what's your favorite? My favorite. Um, oh, now you guys put me on the spot. Uh, oh, come on. Your favorite. Not easy, oh. right? Blade Runner. Nice. Oh, man. It's Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Check out that score for Blade Runner 2049. I cannot right. wait to see that. It looks represented amazing. by us? Yep. Yeah. 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 Nice. And, and yours, sir? E.T. Nice. Oh. I have never cried more. In a cinema than watching. Of, yeah. I don't even like talk about it. When you it, first saw it? When you first saw it? No. So uh, there was the 2K restoration. Yeah, yeah. That I saw at Sidious. Yeah. Um, Wait, not the one with the added scene. No. No. no, no. no. All, the original God, God version. For, God forbid. Um, <laughs> and I, I had never seen it in the theater. I'd seen it so many times. Wow. Saw it in the theater for the first time in Sidious. I have never cried more. Wow. Than that. The impact I was of the big screen. Absolutely just... devastated. Wow. Yeah, dude. That that <laughs> was that was heavy. I'll never forget that experience. I, I, That's awesome. I actually named my son, you know, after my two favorite movies, E.T. and Star Wars. Elliot. So his first no, his first you name know is, your son's named E. T. and Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome if this that's true. E. T. Star that's Wars awesome. dinner. I got this hat, I got this throat. <laughs> it's in Tatooine and <laughs> it's, it's We're not gonna let you say it. We're not gonna let you say it. That's the last name, extra It's it's Ethan. E. T. and then H A N. Han. Mine. I blown. scored that. I got that through. <laughs> yes. Was your wife like Ethan? That's a good name. Yes. And then she up. was like, "Ah, oh, I got tricked into a nerd name. <laughs> oh, yes. No one will ever know." <laughs> guys, man, thank you so so thank much. You, thank it was you. awesome. Thank you very much. Did you guys have a good time? Thank you. Yes. Yes. Awesome, awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, watch your hands. <laughs> watch your hands. Watch your hands, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. I cannot tell you how much fun I had doing that interview with Sebastian and the crew from uh, Spectre Vision. They were so awesome. And I can I hope you can tell that we were having an absolute ball doing that interview. Afterwards, they said to us that they had never done an interview. They've never had more fun doing an interview ever. Like that was the best interview they've ever had, ever. So we are very humbled and uh, grateful that they gave us that that uh, that great review on this interview. So I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, talking to Elijah and to Noah and to Daniel and to Lisa, their their passion for what they do came through so clearly that it inspired me, and I hope it inspires you to continue to do what you do and to not give up and to be very very pinpoint sniper focused on what you want to do and what kind of movies and what kind of stories you want to tell. And when you create a brand, a company, whether that brand is you as a filmmaker, a company, or something along either a company or yourself, you've got to understand your brand and really focus on that brand. And your brand might be like a Steven Soderbergh who jumps genres all over the place. Kubrick did that all the time. He never made the same movie twice. So that could be the brand, you know, or you could be a Woody Allen that does a specific kind of movie and so on. So just keep that in mind, but don't give up. And again, I was so, so, so inspired and and blessed to, uh, to have them on the show. So guys, if you're listening, Elijah, Daniel, uh, Josh, and Lisa, you guys were awesome. Thank you so, so much for dropping some knowledge bombs on the Indie Film Hustle tribe. And I also like to thank Sebastian Tordas from Circus Road Films, as well as Adam Bowman from Three Ring Circus. Without him, you wouldn't be hearing the audio that you're hearing. So thank you guys so much uh, for listening. And I'm again, I'm going to try to do it weekly, a uh, daily this week, uh, get you as many of these podcasts out as possible. I got some awesome guests coming up. So stay tuned, guys. All right. Now I'm going to go rest for a little bit because uh, it's probably going to be another crazy night here on Sundance. And it's if you guys haven't noticed or if you haven't heard or if you haven't seen any of the photos I've been posting, uh, it's effing cold up here. It is blizzard style. I feel like I'm in The Shining. That's how much snow there is outside. <laughs> I literally feel it's shining and Jack Nicholson's going to come in at any moment. So it's kind of crazy. But um, I want to do I'm making this effort because I want to get all this stuff out to you guys um, while it's going on at Sundance. So please hit me up. Let me know what you think of this episode and all the Sundance stuff that I'm doing. Uh, of course, the show notes are going to be at uh, IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 130. And you'll get uh, contact information 
for Spectre Vision, um, for Sebastian, and everybody else that we talked about in this episode. So, as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. Stay warm. <laughs> and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com. 